So basically, today's presentation, I'll be talking about what arthritis is and its management strategies. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, right. So as you can see, this picture shows all the various joints in a person's body that can be affected when a person has arthritis, right? Can you all see this picture? You can, no? Yes. Right. So going on to the types of arthritis, it's very important to know that arthritis is a broad term. So it takes care, under arthritis, you have multiple different types. One, or mainly what most of the patients in the elderly age will have is something called as degenerative or mechanical type of arthritis. Then you have the inflammatory type, which can occur at any age. Then you have a type of arthritis that's more common in children or the juvenile or the childhood arthritis. Then you have other connective tissue diseases where you can have joints that are involved. You can have infectious arthritis where there is infection leading to arthritis. You can have metabolic arthritis when you have certain crystals that get accumulated in the joints and that cause arthritis. Or you can have septic arthritis where the infection is somewhere else and you have a reactive or an infective arthritis. Now, coming to what are the signs and symptoms of a joint that is inflamed or affected in arthritis. One, you might have swelling of the joint where the joint, you can see visible swelling. There is pain on movement of the joint. So even when you touch the joint or move the joint, there's pain. The stiffness, which is basically more in the morning, where the patient is not able to move the joints, so they feel stiffness, especially in the morning, and also the mobility is affected. So these are the main signs of arthritis. Now, just to show you that the joint is a very complex structure, as you can see, we don't need to go into the details, but you can see that there are bones, there are tendons, and there are ligaments and muscles, and also synovial tissue and fluid, that's all in the joint. So joint is not a very simple entity. There are multiple places where the pathology can be there. So when you have pain in a joint, does not mean that it's only in the bone, it could be in the tendon, it could be that you have some fluid that's abnormal, it could be that your meniscus is damaged, it could be multiple things. Now, the most important thing to understand is <laughs> What is the difference between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid or inflammatory arthritis? So for a person who doesn't know, they might confuse both to be the same thing. But uh, to put it in simple terms, osteoarthritis is a mechanical or a degenerative type of joint disease, which occurs mainly in elderly people because of wear and tear, this damage the joint. And that is what is most common among the elderly. Whereas the inflammatory or the rheumatoid arthritis type of arthritis is see when you have swelling, redness and pain of the joint associated with early morning stiffness, this can occur at any age. Though the elderly people also can be affected, it can occur at any age. Now, looking at some differences between a degenerative or mechanical arthritis versus, versus, versus an inflammatory arthritis, you can see in this picture that in a degenerative, there is damage to the cartilage, there is bone that gets eroded, and the joint space gets reduced, and the joint gets abnormal. Whereas in an inflammatory type, there is more of swelling, redness of the joint, the joint is warm, and the damage can occur later. Well, right? Hello? Yes, yeah, sorry? Yeah, in someone had... Uh, hello? Hello. May I kindly request uh, all the participants to please keep your devices on mute. Yeah. We yes. will definitely sure. uh, have doctor answering most of the questions towards the end of the session once we finish the presentation. Thank you for understanding. Okay, sure. So now just coming into, I, I don't want to go too much into detail, but rheumatoid arthritis, as I said, is an inflammatory joint. Now the joints that are involved also are different. So in an osteoarthritis or a degenerative type, the main joints that are affected are your hand joints, the thumb and the knee and the hip. Other joints also can be affected, mainly the knee, the hip and the hand or the thumb joint. <coughs> Whereas when you have inflammatory type, it's mainly the hand joints, the other joints in the hand, the wrist, 
the knees, the ankle. These are joints that are different in both. And coming to again, they'll have stiffness in inflammatory type. The stiffness is usually for around more than half an hour. You have early morning stiffness in the joint. So an important difference between both is in osteoarthritis, as you move around, the pain on the joints get worse. But in inflammatory arthritis, the pain gets better as you move around. So that's one big difference how you can make out whether you have inflammatory type or a degenerative type of arthritis. Now, I'll just touch on rheumatoid arthritis. Basically, rheumatoid arthritis is more common in females than in males. It can occur at any age, but mainly between 35 to 50 years of age. Now, the risk factors could be genetic, where you have a hereditary predisposition, and various other risk factors can trigger a genetically predisposed person. So if they have a history of smoking, alcohol intake, obesity, stress, pollution, so all these can trigger rheumatoid arthritis, but mainly the first trigger is genetic. It can affect other organs also. You can have lung involvement, you can have skin involvement, you can you are more prone to develop a stroke or a heart cardiac disease. Now, the main treatment is immunosuppressive medicines that we'll come to later. But exercise and dietary supplements and to avoid smoking and alcohol is how you can prevent the progression. Now, if, um, you, don't, if you don't treat this, then your joints can get damaged. Right? Now, coming to the management approach, the management basically can be into multiple, you know, different uh, parts. You can exercise, medications, physiotherapy, and then recently with all the advanced technically, there are various genetic and gene therapies that can be used and surgical aspects and multiple things that we'll come go into in detail. Now, coming to the non-pharmacological methods to treat, one of them is exercise where you need to use a programmed exercise regimen which a physiotherapist will help you with where you're strengthen the muscles around the joint. So the muscles around the joint that is badly affected need to be strengthened and that will increase the mobility and also decrease the pain. Weight reduction is also very important. As you all know, more heavy you are, the more load on the joints and therefore more damage to the joint. Then also you can have assistive device, stability devices that a physiotherapist can assist you with, like a walking stick, or other assistive devices like a knee brace, which will help to increase the stability of the joint. Now, physical activity is very important. So depending on the age, the criteria is different. But though the recommendations are up to 50 years, I mean, you can use these recommendations even if you're a fit person at any age. So make sure you have different types of exercises that are involved in your regime. One is aerobic, where up to two to three times a week, you're doing some amount of exercise, which could be in brisk walking or cycling or even some weights. If you low weights up to 10, 10 kgs, 5 kilograms, depending on how much you can, your body can tolerate, up to three to five times, you should do around one to 10 repetitions of around 10 minutes each can be done three, two to three times of aerobic activity. And strengthening exercises to increase the and strengthen the muscles can be done later once you're fit. So remember that exercise is very important because it also helps reduce the weight and also strengthen the muscles and also improves the mood and elevates the mood of a patient who is as such quite, you know, affected because he's not able to move around. So when you exercise, you also feel more happy and that will help. That will help your joints, right? Now, coming to it, yeah. Hello, yeah. So, so there are certain methods how you can enhance the knee, which is the most common joint that is affected. So one way is to make sure that you can lie down. When you're lying down, put a small pillow under your knee and then straighten your knee. Okay, so that and you try to bring the heel up from the floor and hold it in that position for some time. This is a simple exercise that you can start with. Then once and you can bring it down count after counting for 10. And then again do the same thing. So put a pillow under your knee, lift your heel above to how much you can, 
keep that position for 10 seconds and then bring it down. You can do the same thing sitting in a chair where you can again lift your knee and put it on a chair or a stool on the opposite uh, side. Hold this position for 10 seconds and then, then again flex your knee. Once you are able to do it with a support, you can take out the support and try to do it without a support. Similarly, you can again then cross your knees and do the same thing, sitting in a chair. And then the other two are standing where you can try to stand or putting your arms on the chair and try to lift your heel and keep that position, hold your leg at the knee and keep that position for 10 seconds and then bring back to the normal position. Similarly, you can put your ham, hands on the wall and your feet away from the wall, stretch your calf muscles, keep them tight and move them upwards and then again relax for 10 seconds. So these are some basic exercises that you can start off with, which can be done at home just with the help of a chair and a stool if you're able to stand and sit. Now an important thing to note is the diet. So as I said before, Make sure that you eat healthy, balanced diet. There is no specific diet for arthritis. But as I said before, any food that makes you gain weight, like an oily diet, a fatty diet, increased non-vegetarian food in the diet, alcohols, all these things will make, and dairy products, all this will make, and processed food, all these will increase your weight, and that will lead to more load on the joints. So it's important that you eat healthy, a balanced diet which contains enough vitamins, proteins, vegetables, carbohydrates and try to avoid eating too much of oily fatty food and also processed food. Right Now another important uh, type of arthritis is a crystal arthritis or a gout which most patients can also develop especially when they have a high uric acid in their blood. So uric acid is useful for the body, but if it's more than a certain level, the cutoff is usually seven, then uric acid starts to form crystals in the blood. And these crystals then tend to deposit in the joints, mainly the first joint in the first toe of the foot, the first MTP or the first toe where these crystals get accumulated. And then that leads to an irritation there, which leads to swelling, pain and redness. Now, gout is very important because sometimes the medications that you're on, the diet that you're on, or aid itself can lead to increased uric acid. And that can lead to crystals. Now, it's very painful if someone has an attack of gout, they'll never forget it because it's a very painful type of arthritis. Though it can affect the first toe most commonly, it can affect other joints also. Now, some way to prevent a trigger of an attack of gout is again to avoid alcohol, high sugar containing fluids like Coke, Pepsi and other carbonated drinks, high purine or high uh, protein diet like the main protein that comes from non-vegetarian diet. So avoiding non-vegetarian, especially red meat, can prevent the attack of gout. Now, other med there are certain medicines like pain medicines and other diuretics and other medicines that can also increase your uric acid level and therefore you should meet your doctor to see if you have an attack of gout to see if some of the hypertensive medicines or other medicines are triggering an attack of gout. Treatment is pain management, avoiding diet that causes this and other medicines that we won't go into detail now. Now, very important to know is are you, are you a patient who is suffering from osteoarthritis or rheumatoid or arthritis or gout? So osteoarthritis, like I said before, is a degenerative type of arthritis which occurs in elderly. It's not a type of arthritis that is inflammatory. It's mainly due to damage to the joint. It usually occurs in men and women about the age of 50 or older. And usually you can have an associated history of other types of arthritis like rheumatoid and gout. They might be obese. And if you're obese, you tend to have a chance of developing osteoarthritis earlier than other people. And a person who has an injury to a joint, for example, if you had an accident and you've damaged your knee or your hip, then you're more prone to develop osteoarthritis earlier. There are obviously, like I said earlier, some genetic factors that can predispose a patient to develop 
more arthritis earlier, especially if a patient is a sports person like a footballer or a cricketer or a high or a person who's involved in high impact sports like karate and others where your joints are under a lot of stress, then again in those people you might develop arthritis earlier than the others. So it's important to know that osteoarthritis is very common type of joint pains that are seen in the elderly and it's very important to identify because if you don't it can prolong the damage now what are the symptoms of osteoarthritis so like i said you can have a stiff joint but unlike in rheumatoid and other types of inflammatory arthritis the stiffness does not last for long the joint could be deformed which means it's not when it's in a normal position it does not look normal the joint could be in a flex position or in abdominal position. There's difficulty in moving the joint or moving around walking because the joint is damaged. You might hear a clicking or a cracking sound, especially when you bend the joint, you might hear a sound. Or when you put your hand on the joint, you might feel a crack that's there. And there might be pain on moving the joint. Now, after knee replacement that has come in, Knee replacement or joint replacement is a method by which the joints, which the part that is damaged, is replaced by an artificial metallic prosthesis or a part, which then helps in mobilization of the joint. So, though this is not a very complicated surgery and it's an important surgery to do because it can help you to get back to a normal lifestyle. So, I'm not advocating that all arthritis should undergo in the surgery, but people who are not able to walk, move around or carry out their daily activities, joint replacement does, does help in improving their lifestyle. Now, what are the issues when you should think of a replacement? So, knee replacement should be thought of if the pain is severe in the joint and it's not controlled even after medicines and exercise, there is complete bowing of the knee where the bow is totally deformed and you're unable to walk. There's swelling and pain in the knee that's not controlled and the deformity is very bad. So in these, when you have these symptoms and it's not controlled with exercise or medications, then you should always advise, take the advice of an orthopedician and try to get a knee joint replacement done if it's required. Right? So in summary, first thing to understand why I have this talk is to know whether you actually have a joint problem. And if it's a joint problem, what type of joint problem? Is it an inflammatory where there is swelling, red, stiffness, or it's a degenerative type where the joint is damaged? Do I need to take some medications? Will medications help me? Where in an inflammatory type, the medications will help when you have immunosuppression, steroids, and other medicines. Whereas in a degenerative or osteoarthritis, medications have not much role. It's mainly pain management. And after that, you need to think or see, assess yourself whether you're able to carry out your daily activities because of the pain and the deformity. So am I able to carry out? Am I able to do things on my own? Am I able to have a bath on my own, eat on my own, go to the market on my own? Or are my joint pains and deformities affecting my natural and daily activity? And after that, it's an exercise regime. So depending on what is the pathology in the joints, to have a proper regime as to strengthen the muscles on the joint. Right? And then if all this is not working and still you have pain and deformity, then should I actually get a joint replacement? And will it actually help me in improving my quality of life, right? So that was the short presentation on arthritis. I didn't go into details of the management and treatment because that is beyond the scope of this and it's not mainly for because this talk because it's personalized and depends on what exactly the patient needs. So I'll uh, hand over to the, the organizer yeah, and also if people have questions, I can take them for you. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. I'm sure it was a very informative session. We now will go into questions. We have Miss Preeti Rani with her first question. She says, 
how do i make bone stronger at this age yeah so bone stronger basically first of all why depends on whether you have arthritis or you just want generally your bones to become strong so if you just want your bones to be strong having a glass of milk without the cream because if you have diabetes or hypertension or a cardiac disease then i would not advise taking the cream but having skim milk or taking out the cream and having one glass of milk as adequate calcium and if you want you can also take some calcium supplements vitamin d is an important vitamin that helps strengthen the bones and most of indians have a low vitamin d even my vitamin d will be low because most of us stay indoors and we are not exposed to enough sunlight so just by having adequate sunlight is a good way to increase your vitamin d because vitamin b to make it active we need we need uh, sunlight right so having adequate exposure to sunlight calcium supplements and also having vitamin d supplements you don't need to check your vitamin d but if you can afford it always good to do a vitamin d before you start supplements because having too much of calcium and vitamin d is also detrimental because it can lead to you know too much of calcium can make the bones brittle they can cause calcium stones and other complications so you can always check your vitamin d and take supplements calcium to strengthen the bones and beyond that exercise is also very important because it will help to streamline your muscles and bones to make your mobility more effective right hope i have answered that question thank you doctor doctor i know you did cover about distinguishing between general knee pain and arthritic pain if you could yeah, just give us yeah, yeah so yeah. i mean arthritis is a misnomer okay so uh, itis basically means inflammation unfortunately osteoarthritis is not a inflammatory type of joint pain and sometimes rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis are used uh, you know interchange where they mean completely two different things so basically inflammatory arthritis is inflammation of the joint which can occur at any age it's basically swelling redness warmth of the joint so the joint is inflamed whereas osteoarthritis is basically osteo damage to the joint degenerative type of joint where the joint is damaged because of which there is pain in the joint there could be some amount of swelling there won't be redness or warmth of the joint it's mainly because of damage right so okay yeah moving on to the next question we have mr venkata you asking us uh, asking you doctor if yeah there is a family history of rheumatoid arthritis yeah in, is there is the chances of getting arthritis at a higher risk yes that's a very good question yes so most of these inflammatory type of arthritis are genetic and hereditary which means that if your relatives your immediate first generation relatives had rheumatoid arthritis you have a more chance of developing arthritis which is rheumatoid arthritis but it's not 100% so it's not that if your father or your mother had you're guaranteed to have there is more chance of developing right secondary the triggers for arthritis like if you had gone if you're listening to my talk i said the first hit is genetic but what triggers arthritis is the other environmental and lifestyle changes so smoking alcohol obesity stress and these are the, and age these are the things that trigger rheumatoid arthritis so just having a genetic predisposition might not actually cause arthritis it's what triggers it right yes. hope i answered that Yeah. Yes, doctor. Moving on to the next question, we have uh, Mr. Venkata again asking us: Is there a kind of a blood test, a serum blood test, that is used to yeah. check RA? Yes. So there are serological tests like your rheumatoid factor and anti CCP, which are your sero serological markers, which can be positive in rheumatoid arthritis. But again, first you should have a clinical suspicion. so sometimes you can have falsely positive titers especially of rheumatoid factor which could be positive so in infections in age itself can cause a high titer of when you are more older the rheumatoid factor can falsely be positive 
So just having a serological test without symptoms of inflammatory arthritis won't mean you have arthritis. They aid you in diagnosing, but you can't blindly just use those tests to confirm. So clinically, you should have features suggestive arthritis and the serological tests will help you. Right? Yeah. Is that okay? No. We consult a doctor first before we do any test. In yeah, simple words. yeah, because now That's the labs are easily accessible. So when exactly. you tell them, they'll do up the test. But then if you have a positive <laughs> test, it does not mean that you have rheumatoid arthritis. Unfortunately, if you're positive, a doctor, or not only among the lay people, even doctors, sometimes if you're not a rheumatologist, would falsely diagnose you to have rheumatoid arthritis and you'll be on medications for a long time, which you don't need. So it's important if you're suspecting rheumatoid or inflammatory arthritis, to meet a rheumatologist, where a doctor then will confirm that you have rheumatoid arthritis. Don't just test and then, you know, be worried that you have arthritis and then Google things and be upset. Right? So it is advisable to consult a doctor. Please do not do any self-medication yeah, or self-testing. Yeah. And yeah. also about uh, indigenous medicines, I didn't touch on it because it's a little uh, tricky topic to touch on, but because of the benefit of touching, I'll touch on it. I will not recommend indigenous medicines to be used because most of them would have a lot of impurities, which might lead to complications and other organs being affected, which at this age might be detrimental, right? So a simple method of why I would advocate is, for example, you won't go to a river and drink the water, though it's natural, right? I mean, we all know, we have sense. You're not going to go to the closest river and drink water. You're going to drink filtered water, though it's natural. And why are we doing it for our medicines, right? So natural is no more natural water throws 100 years back. There are so many impurities now. So uh, be careful about indigenous medicines. So I won't stress on the point. It's your choice, but personally, I won't advocate it. Right? Moving okay. on. We have one more request from Mr. Venkata to post this uh, presentation on the website, sir. We will post the recording. So, yeah, few... we'll do that. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. We I have... Know whether, whether yeah. this is being recorded, but uh, yeah. the slides, I can freely send it to you. Sure, yeah. sure, doctor. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, we have Ms. Ratna who asks us, what should I do to reduce uric acid? Yeah, so, I mean, um, if you look at it scientifically, I mean, all of you must be learned people, correct? All of you are, right? So, what happens when you add a little salt to a glass of water? It will dissolve, correct? Right? Yes. If you add water to a glass, salt to a glass of water, it dissolves. If you add more salt to that same glass of water, what happens? It dissolves Absolutely. again, right? If you add more salt, what happens? Crystallizes. Very good. So there is a point. If all of you chemistry people who remember your school chemistry will know there's a point called it saturation point, right? It's a point beyond which the salt that is added cannot be salt, you know, cannot dissolve. It forms crystals. Similarly, in the Similarly in the similarly in the blood, uric acid is in a soluble form. But when we when it goes above seven, it starts to form crystals. Now these crystals are <laughs> these are foreign bodies that usually go and lodge in the joints and then they cause irritation, swelling, and pain. So uric acid is a byproduct of protein breakdown. So uric acid can be increased either if you take too much of protein. Like I said, red meat, alcohol, carbonated drinks, high-protein diet can increase the protein in your diet. <laughs> there could be an increased cell turnover where the cells are getting damaged. Like in cancer, malignancies, when you're on treatment, your uric acid levels can go up. Similarly, if you have a renal involvement, your kidneys, as the name implies, uric means it's excreted through your urine. So when your urine kidneys are not able to excrete the uric acid, even then your uric acid can go up. So these are all the reasons why your uric acid can go up. And when your uric acid goes up, it forms crystals and that then get lodged in your joints and that causes your gout or arthritis. So the method to decrease depends on what is the cause. Right? Okay. Yeah. We uh, have... 
can i ask something yes yes sir. uh we started off with this uh, osteoporosis this bone yes. density does it affect arthritis also no sir but they go hand in hand so especially if you have arthritis most probably you will have osteoporosis also no because you told me about the density uh, i have taken the spine density as 1.34 so that's not osteoporosis it Yeah. T score has to be more than minus two point five. It is T score is one. It's normal. You're very good. Your bones are better than mine. Uh, and uh, Z score is also one point nine. That's good, sir. You're good. So you I don't, don't have, have any problems. You have other problems, maybe, but you don't have osteoporosis. <laughs> That's a good. That's what I wanted to confirm. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh, sir. Yeah. I. Yeah, I have Mr. Arun who says, "How can I connect with Dr. Silas? Yeah. What you can do is please yeah. get in yeah. touch with yeah. Bayar with sure. us. We'll be more yeah. than happy to get you an appointment sure. with Dr. Sure. Yeah, I think the our team in Baptist will help you with that. Yeah. Yes. And the next question is from Mr. Prakash. Is it good to go for a knee replacement surgery when I am seventy three years old and having high blood sugar and had a bypass surgery, also kidney stone?" the patient i am not able to walk and have severe pain in my knee right sir so it so as you you know read out all the complications that you have it depends if you had a bypass sur surgery how strong your heart is so for any surgery you need to have a certain amount of function in your vital organs to prepare for a major surgery so you will need a proper assessment by a cardiologist and also renal doctor and nephrologist to see whether you're fit but if you have pain and you are unable to walk and uh, an orthopedician will then assess and see whether you need a surgery but are you fit or not will then be determined on how strong your heart and your kidney is how your functions are so there is actually age is not a bar so you can have a knee replacement even at 75 or 80 but your other comorbidities have to be taken into consideration Whether you're fit or not for the surgery, right? Thank you, doctor. Yeah. Moving on to the next question, we have Sharad Krishna, Mr. Sharad Krishna, who asks, "Why does de degeneration take place? How can it be prevented?" Right, uh, good question, but uh, it's part of a uh, aging process. So, why do wrinkles occur on the skin? If I ask you, what would be your answer? So, the same way, the joints also get damaged over time. right and it's a wear and tear process like any mechanical thing joints also have a lubricant which is a synovial fluid so as you grow old the fluid gets less so there's more friction between the joints that leads to more wear and tear and therefore in people who are laborers or you know sports people who are indulging in high impact sports they tend to have more degeneration or earlier degeneration so how to prevent it is to make sure you strengthen the muscles around the joint especially the knee and the hip so that the load on the joint comes down so weight reduction muscle strengthening exercises can delay the progression of degeneration please are there you know, are there any medicines uh, which can help no sir there are no such medicines and if someone tells you also don't believe them right there are okay. bone strengthening medicines but there is no medicine to prevent degeneration so all the bogus medicines that are very expensive are actually mm -hmm. of no use weight reduction muscle strengthening are important ways in which you can delay the degeneration but there is no way in preventing it and something like uh, lupivastin plus or rose up hd that's what so those uh, that's what so those are all your cartilage enhancing tablets so okay. the research is there they might help they might okay. not help but again okay. if you if you are having a good balanced diet you don't need mm -hmm. those extra supplements okay okay thank you so much uh, what thank about this gemtide i asked you about you so you won't need it sir because you don't have osteoporosis i don't need it yeah thank you yeah. moving on to the next question we have mr mohan asking us i am 61 years old having yes. numbness on my left toe main toe joint okay okay what tests are advised so i mean numbness is do you have pain or just numbness he says i have numbness uh, mr mohan if you are there you could kindly unmute and you know 
ask doctor the it question. It is uh, numbness, ma'am. It is numbness. It's yeah, numbness. so, so numbness. I... It is only numbness. No, numbness. No, are, you, are you a diabetic? Uh, mild diabetic, sir. I am mild diabetic. Yeah. So probably it's like a diabetic neuropathy. It's more uh -huh. of a neur neurological numbness. is a neurological problem. So it's probably because of your diabetes that you've developed probably a neuropathy, uh, uh, diabetic neuropathy. So there are some medicines that you can take like pregabalin or um, which will enhance your nerves. And if you want to quantify it, then you need to do a nerve conduction test, which a neurologist will help you with. And then you can show a neurologist to see if it's something significant, the numbness. If it's something that's happened suddenly, and if it's significant, then you need to meet a neurologist and do a nerve conduction test to see actually whether it's severe or not. Okay? Is there any medication for that, doctor? That's what, sir. You can take some medicines, but first we need to see why you're having it. Is it part of diabetes or you have a nerve that's being affected because numbness is more of a neurological problem it's not an arthritis problem so you need to probably do a nerve conduction test to see why you're developing the numbness right okay thank you thank you doctor thank you moving on to our next question um we have miss daisy kumar he, she asks what dals are to be avoided for uric acid so, see, all dals have protein, but everything that you eat has protein. So, high-protein diet is avoided. So, normal amount of dal that we have is okay. If you're having it three to four times a week, there's no harm. But if you're only eating dal three times a day for seven days a week, then it can cause your uric acid to go up. Right? All dals are okay. If you're taking two to three times once a day, is all right. Right? But especially soya bean and nutri or the those things have a high protein content. So those I would recommend to avoid compared to the other dolls and other pulses. Is that okay? Yes, doctor. Thank you so much. We have Ms. Shanti Rao asking us side effects of long-term use of painkillers in knee and hip pain. Yeah, so painkillers can be different types. You can have non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. You can have opioids. You can have paracetamol base. So it depends on what type of painkiller you're using. So relatively safe are your paracetamol-based painkillers. Unless you have a liver disease or a coagulopathy, bleeding tendency, uh, paracetamol-based painkillers are safe. Your opioids are your tramadol and other opioid type of painkillers, which can be addictive. So I would not recommend using for a long time. And especially if you have a neurological problem, it can lead to increased sleepiness, constipation, and other complications. The yeah, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Evovran, Diclofenac, all these are stronger painkillers, but should not be used for a long time. But they can affect your kidney, cause gastritis, right? So always make sure that you take a prescription from a doctor and don't self-medicate with painkillers. Especially in an elderly age, your kidneys and your gastritis can occur, which can lead to further damage and more complications. Is uh, that okay? Uh, yes, doctor. It is, yeah, it is on prescription. I'm yeah. using Ultra B and I just wanted to get over. Yeah, so plain paracetamol-based pain tablets are okay, ma'am. The others are not good to take for a long time. Sure. Especially uh, yeah, at the okay. elderly age. Yeah. Thank you. We have uh, Ms. Parimala Devi. Ma'am, we will get in touch with you for an appointment, for booking an appointment with Dr. Silas. We will get in touch with you. I have Ms. Sika who asks, is it harmful to climb stairs after you are 40 years old? She's heard okay. this. No, it's not harmful to climb stairs. In fact, it's good to climb stairs because climbing stairs is one exercise that helps to strengthen your muscles. But it also depends on whether you already have a deformed joint. So already if your joint is deformed and you're able to not walk up the stairs without holding the railing or without support, then yes, then it's not advised because you might fall and break your bones. But if you're able to walk, it's good to walk up the stairs because it will strengthen your muscles. In fact, it's better than running. So any low impact exercises like walking, climbing steps, cycling, swimming, or elliptical trainer, cross trainer in the gym are good. Treadmill, running, and jumping are not advised. 
because that can damage your joints after a certain age. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. We have Ms. Jayashree who says, what tests are recommended to find out if you have arthritis? Yeah, that's what, ma'am. First, it's a clinical. So I won't go into too much details. I've answered this already. So you need to find out what type of arthritis you have. Is it a degenerative type or it's a inflammatory type? So a simple x-ray will help you to see whether you have damage or, you know, you have inflammation. And the clinical features like swelling, redness, early morning stiffness is suggestive of inflammatory, whereas difficulty in walking, uh, deformity is more in favor of a degenerative. But uh, you need to meet a doctor to see what tests you need depending on the type of arthritis. So don't just blindly go to a lab and do the tests because you might do tests which you don't need to and you might find things you didn't want to. Right? So I have, you know, asked all the questions that was posted on the chat. So our heartfelt gratitude to you, doctor, for taking time off from your busy no, schedule to be with us today. We thank Baptist Hospital as well for accepting our uh, request and helping us conduct this webinar for our members. It was a very, very informative webinar. We have a, a very positive feedback, doctor, for you that's pouring oh, in. Says, well, uh, yeah. done and Thanks a lot. Thanks a so lot, much. all of you. Yeah. Hope I can see you all face to face soon. Not, so not, I was just going to say. Yeah, not in the hospital. I'm just saying, just to say hello. <laughs> I don't want you to get sick and come here. I'm just saying. Yeah, nice meeting you. I know you all of you are doing great work, even in the organization. And thank you for conducting this and spreading awareness among the common public. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, everybody, for joining in today. If you want an appointment with Doctor, we are more than happy to get that done. Please leave a message for us. Connect with Vaya with us. We're more than happy to help you connect with uh, doctor in case we haven't answered or you you want to ask some questions please write to us we will have that as well answered thank you so much once again doctor for giving us this time and thanks once again to bangalore baptist hospital thank you all of all, all of y'all for joining in today have a great evening and god bless